It's the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia, with your host, Bob Snap. Hi guys, welcome to the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, today's video is by request. Someone asked me the other day, asked if I could do one on this guy, and I said, sure, if I could find something, and I did. Charles Lane. Uh, he was happy playing the classic TV, biggest stinker of all time. In a rather Frank Capra-esque episode of the Andy Griffith Show titled Aunt B the Crusader, Aunt B gets the whole town to rally on the side of the town egg man, Mr. Frisbee. He's being evicted uh, so his farm can be demolished to build a new highway, and an unlikely Aunt B comes to his rescue. The episode shows prolific character actor Charles Lane in a rare sympathetic role. Over one of the most expansive acting careers of all time, Lane mostly was known for playing the kind of jerk who ruined everyone's day. In the 1930s, he was a muse for Frank Capra, uh, who cast him in most of his movies. According to the LA Times in 2007, Capra once wrote Lane a letter that touched him so much he framed it. It said, I'm sure that everyone has someone that they can lean on and use as a crutch whenever stories and scenes threaten to fall apart. Well, Charlie, you've been my number one crutch. Lane called Capra his favorite director with his favorite role of all time coming to the classic film, You Can't Take It With You. Capra made wonderful pictures. Lane told Newsday in 74, I think they still stand up. In the same article, a Paramount producer swore that Lane became the go-to grump for movies and TV shows, explaining that people would say, try to get like Charles Lane, and if you can't get him, get someone like him. Lane saw all these characters exactly the same, and he wished he had been given more diverse roles. But over time, he saw no point in complaining. On his 100th birthday, he reflected, you did something that was pretty good, and that picture was pretty good. That pedigreed you into that type of part, which I thought was stupid and unfair, too. It didn't give me a chance, but it made casting easier for the studio. In his earliest acting days, he was an MGM contract player, and he said they paid him $35 a day and tried to get as many movies out of the day as they could. Sometimes they meant he, uh, that meant he played four movie roles in one day. He was a perfectionist and never felt he nailed a performance until after the camera stopped rolling. There never was any glamour in it, he said. It was a job. You tried to do the scene as well as you could. You never felt you did it as well as you'd like. After leave, leaving the studio and while stopped by for a signal light, I would figure out how I should have done the scene, and I would do it in the car while waiting for the light. It was a great traffic light actor. Over his career, Lane portrayed hundreds of authority figures, most paper-pushing bullies, the classic TV fans likely came to know him best through I Love Lucy from 53 to 56. He appeared four times, always serving as a grouchy foil perturbed by Lucy's bumbling ways. Lane and Lucy were old friends who had met when she was a chorus girl. She featured him on all her shows, and he said his favorite episode was with her, uh, was the first one he did in Lucy Goes to the Hospital, the most watched I Love Lucy episode ever. Lane played another father in a waiting room with Desi Arnaz, whose stern, calm demeanor contrasts Ricky's nerves. This old guy was expecting his tenth child or something, and this nervous young man was expecting his first, Lane told the Associated Press in 2007. It was a marvelous scene, and Desi was a fine actor. Lane was a fine actor, too, and everybody knew it, even if nobody ever really said it. Over 60 years, he remained one of the most solid actors in Hollywood. Dependable anytime you needed someone to really irk the audience. He memorably played recurring roles on Dennis the Menace, Petticoat Junction, The Lucy Show, and The Beverly Hillbillies. Well, they were all good parts, but they were all jerks, he said. And if you had a type established, uh, though you're any good, it can mean considerable work for you. For all the movies and TV shows Lane appeared in, he told the LA Times in 1980 that he hated watching himself on screen more than any of the heroes in those pictures hated dealing with his cold-hearted, meany characters. It's a very unpleasant uh, sensation for me, he said, of watching his own acting. I try to avoid it. 
tell you how good an actor, tell you how good an actor the man was. Uh, he was in one episode of the Andy Griffith show, and everyone remembers that character. That's how good he was. And uh, I, I, I loved the way they did it because uh, Aunt B and all of them was feeling so bad for him, and we could see through the eyes of Andy uh, what he really was, you know. Uh, and we knew something was going to happen. And it was just a good, it was a good episode all around. Uh, but anyway, I believe that's all I have for you. I went to the doctor this morning, cardiologist, and he wants to do a stress test, even though he agrees, kind of leaning towards that it is GERD that I have. So uh, keep them prayers coming because stress tests ain't fun. I've done them before. Uh, anyway, I appreciate all the prayers and stuff too. You guys are awesome. Please don't forget to like this video. Thank you very much. Uh, classic TV facts and trivia is on All in the Family. Classic Rock and Country Music Facts Trivia, Beverly Hillbillies Facts Trivia is off for the weekend. Uh, Faith and Entertainment, I'm recommending the movie War Room. Trailer's over there. Go over there and check that out. Great, great movie. Excellent movie. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you have a great Saturday. God bless, and I'm praying for you.